What if I told you that millions of years before humans walked the Earth, the planet was crawling with creatures so bizarre, so alien, so utterly unexplainable, that even modern scientists are left stunned? We're not talking about your average dinosaur. We're diving into the forgotten, the misfits, the evolutionary experiments, creatures that looked like they came straight out of a nightmare or from another planet entirely. Some had eyeballs on stalks, others had spinning mouths lined with teeth, and there were massive rodents the size of bulls, millipedes as long as cars, and whales with jaws built like wrecking balls. But the strangest part, we didn't even know they existed until we started digging. Fossils unearthed from ancient seabeds, monsters frozen in time beneath layers of rock, each discovery reshaping what we thought we knew about life on Earth. So buckle up, because what you're about to see will make even the weirdest sci-fi aliens look tame. These are the most mind-bending, jaw-dropping, and scientifically confusing extinct creatures ever discovered. And by the end of this video, you'll be asking yourself just one question. How the hell did these things even exist? Let's begin. Creature number one is the Tully Monster, a one-foot-long, soft-bodied sea creature with stalked eyes and a terrifying pincer-tip proboscis lined with tiny, sharp teeth. Discovered in the Maison Creek fossil beds of Illinois and dating back over 300 million years to the Carboniferous period, this bizarre animal has puzzled scientists for decades. Its body was so strange and unique that for years, researchers couldn't even agree on whether it was a vertebrate or an invertebrate. Some thought it was related to snails, others believed it was a kind of worm, and some even argued it might belong to a completely extinct branch of life. Its official name, Tully monstrum gregarium doesn't clear things up either. It only adds to the mystery. What makes the Tully monster truly strange isn't just how it looked, but how little we still understand about it. Even with thousands of well-preserved fossils, experts continue to debate its classification, function, and how it fit into its environment. Visually, imagine an underwater alien, thin, flattened body, eyes on rigid rods sticking out like antennas, and a flexible trunk ending in a claw-like mouth that looks ready to grab and slice prey. In an animated reconstruction, it glides eerily through murky waters, turning its head stalks to scan the depths while its toothy proboscis darts forward like a robotic arm. To this day, it remains one of the most mysterious fossils ever found, and the more we uncover, the weirder it gets. Next up is a true terror from Earth's ancient past, Arthropleura, the largest millipede-like arthropod to ever crawl across the planet. Picture this, a massive armor-plated creature stretching up to eight and a half feet long, nearly the length of a small car, slithering silently across the forest floor like a living tank made of chitin and nightmares. This was no tiny household millipede. This thing was nightmare fuel insect on steroids. It lived during the Carboniferous period, roughly 300 million years ago, a time when vast swampy forests dominated the Earth and the atmosphere was supercharged with oxygen. And that's key. Back then, oxygen levels reached up to 35% compared to just 21% today. That hyper-oxygenated environment allowed arthropods and insects to grow far larger than they ever could in modern conditions. Arthropleura didn't have lungs like mammals. Instead, it breathed through a network of tiny air tubes called spiracles, the more oxygen in the air, the more effectively those tubes worked, meaning evolution went wild and created a literal giant bug that could stretch longer than most humans are tall. Despite its monstrous size, evidence suggests Arthropleura wasn't a predator. Its mouthparts were more suited for chewing than biting, and it likely spent its days munching on decaying plant matter, dead leaves, and ferns on the forest floor. But that doesn't make it any less terrifying. Imagine walking through dense, prehistoric underbrush and suddenly hearing the slow, deliberate rustling of segmented plates dragging across the ground, only to turn and see this monstrous invertebrate looming over you, its dozens of legs clacking like armor across the mud. Fossilized trackways discovered in Scotland and Germany show that Arthropleura moved with surprising speed and grace for such a heavy-bodied creature. It left behind massive, undulating trails in ancient sediments evidence that it was not only real but once incredibly common in its environment. And just to make things weirder, paleontologists believe it may have had very few natural predators due to its size and possibly toxic body chemistry, 
giving it free reign over the ancient forest for millions of years. It was only the drop in atmospheric oxygen near the end of the Carboniferous period that finally sealed its fate. As oxygen levels fell, massive arthropods like Arthropleura could no longer survive. Their breathing systems simply couldn't support their size, and they vanished into extinction. Today, the only reminder of their existence is a handful of fossilized remains, mostly impressions of their segmented exoskeletons and the eerie trails they left behind. But those fossils tell a chilling story, that Earth was once ruled not just by towering reptiles or massive mammals, but by insects so colossal they make today's biggest bugs look like harmless toys. Arthropleura isn't just a prehistoric oddity. It's proof that nature, under the right conditions, can scale your worst insect phobia into an unstoppable, real-life horror. And once you've seen what it looked like, you'll never look at a millipede the same way again. Now imagine this, you're drifting in the warm, shallow seas of what is now Egypt 40 million years ago. The water is calm until a shadow passes underneath, longer than a city bus and far more terrifying. Meet Basilosaurus, a colossal predator that reigned over the ancient oceans. Despite its name, which literally means King Lizard, this beast was no reptile. It was a fully aquatic, meat-eating whale stretching over 66 feet long, with a skull the size of a refrigerator and jaws lined with razor-sharp teeth. Basilosaurus lived during the late Eocene Epoch, and it wasn't just big, it was apex predator big. Picture the killer whale of its time, only longer, more flexible, and arguably more terrifying. What made it even stranger was its body shape. Unlike modern whales, which are built like torpedoes, Basilosaurus had a long, eel-like body that twisted and undulated as it swam. Its massive frame lacked the muscular tail flukes of modern whales, but it made up for that with powerful, sinuous motion, allowing it to glide like a serpent through the prehistoric waters. Fossils of Basilosaurus have been found in North America, Northern Africa, and the Middle East, with some of the best preserved remains unearthed in the Egyptian desert, a place once covered by an ancient sea. In fact, there's a location called Wadi al hitan or Valley of the Whales, where the fossilized skeletons of Basilosaurus stretch across the sand, still embedded in the earth as haunting reminders of a time when whales had teeth and hunted like crocodiles. Basilosaurus wasn't a gentle giant, it was a relentless predator. Its teeth show wear patterns from gnawing on large prey, including fish, sharks, and even smaller whales. And here's the part that gives you chills. It had tiny, vestigial hind limbs, complete with toes, leftovers from when whales still walked on land. These limbs were useless for walking but may have played a role in mating, hinting at Basilosaurus's strange transitional status in whale evolution. It was both primitive and advanced, a relic of the past and a glimpse into the future of cetaceans. Its skull structure shows it had a powerful bite force and CT scans suggest it had a highly developed inner ear, allowing it to locate prey with eerie precision, even in murky waters. It was a silent hunter with sonar-like ability before sonar even existed. Basilosaurus ruled the oceans before orcas, before great whites, before giant squid battles. This was the original marine monster. In terms of sheer size and raw presence, it would have dwarfed most modern sea life. It's hard to imagine, but at one point, Earth's oceans weren't just filled with fish. They were the hunting grounds of a serpent-shaped whale with a lizard's name and a killer's instincts. Basilosaurus didn't just swim through prehistoric waters, it dominated them. And when you see its fossil laid out in the desert sun, bone by bone, stretching beyond your line of sight, one thought sticks in your mind. This wasn't just an ancient whale. It was a ruler, a monster, and a mystery, all in one. Now imagine a rodent, not the kind that scurries through alleyways or chews through wires, but a rodent the size of a full-grown horse with front teeth nearly 10 inches long and a skull that looks more like it belongs to a war beast than a rodent. Meet Josefa Artigazia Monesi, the largest rodent ever discovered on Earth. This giant lived around 3 million years ago in what is now South America, and everything about it screams overkill. It stood nearly 5 feet tall at the shoulder, weighed close to a ton, and had a set of curved incisors so large and sharp they could put a medieval dagger to shame. At first glance, you'd think this thing was built for destruction. But here's the fascinating twist. 
Despite its terrifying appearance, Josefo Artigazia wasn't a predator. It was a plant eater. A giant herbivore roaming ancient wetlands, chewing on soft vegetation, and maybe even using its massive teeth like tusks to dig up roots or strip bark from trees. What really shocked scientists, though, wasn't just the size of this prehistoric guinea pig relative, it was its bite force. Studies using computer models of its skull revealed that Joseph Ortegazia had a bite force comparable to that of a modern-day tiger. Let that sink in. A rodent with a bite as powerful as a big cat. Why would a herbivore need that kind of power? Well, researchers believe its enormous incisors weren't just for eating. They could have been used for defense against predators like saber-toothed cats or terror birds, or possibly even in dominance battles with other members of its own species. Its head alone measured over 20 inches, and those long teeth never stopped growing, just like in modern rodents, meaning it likely spent a good amount of time gnawing on tough materials to keep them in check. To understand its diet and role in the ecosystem, scientists looked at the shape and wear of its molars, as well as its jaw mechanics. Its teeth were adapted for grinding, not slicing, suggesting it fed mostly on soft, low-fiber plants like fruits, aquatic vegetation, and maybe even grasses. Fossils found near ancient river deltas hint that it preferred swampy environments, where it could wade through muddy waters and munch on everything in sight, like a furry tank with a never-ending appetite. It probably played a similar role to that of modern-day capybaras, only on a much larger scale, serving as a key food source for predators and helping shape the plant life of its ecosystem. Despite its massive size, Josefo Artigazia was no brute. It was a specialized, well-adapted herbivore that dominated its niche, living in a time when South America's wildlife looked more like a fantasy novel than a real-world ecosystem. And today, all that remains of this prehistoric titan are a few fossilized skulls. Skulls so big, so bizarre, and so powerful that paleontologists had to double-check the math just to believe they were real, but they are. And Josefo Artigazia proves that in the ancient world, even the rodents were monstrous. Now picture this. You're standing on the grassy plains of South America over 10,000 years ago. The air is dry, the land stretches endlessly, and in the distance, a strange creature is slowly moving across the savanna. At first glance, you think it's a boulder. Then it moves. Closer now, and you realize this thing is unlike anything alive today. It's called Glyptodon, a colossal armor-plated beast that looked like a tank on legs. Imagine a Volkswagen Beetle with a tail like a medieval club and the head of a reptilian battering ram. This creature wasn't some mythical monster. It was a real, living relative of the modern armadillo, but supersized beyond imagination. It weighed over 2,000 pounds, stretched up to 10 feet long, and was completely encased in a dome of bone, its back covered by a solid fused shell made of hundreds of hexagonal plates known as osteoderms. This natural armor made it nearly impenetrable to most predators of its time, and when it hunkered down, it was basically invulnerable. But what really sets Glyptodon apart was its tail, a thick, heavy weapon reinforced with rings of bone, ending in a club that could crush bones and possibly even kill. Scientists believe these tail clubs were used not only for defense against predators like saber-toothed cats, but also in brutal intraspecies combat, fights between rival males, maybe over mates or territory, smashing their tails into each other like armored knights in slow-motion duels. Despite its monstrous appearance, Glyptodon was a herbivore. It likely grazed on grasses and tough plants, using its flat grinding teeth to chew through coarse vegetation. But it wasn't just prey. It was part of a larger ecological dance between massive herbivores and the humans who would eventually drive them to extinction. You see, Glyptodon lived at a time when early humans had begun spreading across the Americas. And even though this beast was armored like a tank, it wasn't invincible. Spear tips and butchering marks have been found on Glyptodon fossils, suggesting that humans hunted them, perhaps targeting their underbellies or waiting for them to be vulnerable during migration or rest. Some researchers even believe that humans may have used their empty shells as shelters, turning their remains into makeshift homes or storage. The overlap between humans and Glyptodon 
is one of the clearest examples of megafauna human interaction and one of the earliest. It's a sobering thought. A creature that survives saber-toothed predators, harsh ice age climates, and fierce competitors eventually fell to coordinated human hunting. By around 10,000 years ago, the last of the glyptodons vanished, part of a broader extinction event that wiped out countless giant mammals. Today, all that remains are fossils, beautiful dome-like shells and massive club tails that look like something out of a fantasy novel. But make no mistake, Glyptodon was real. It was slow, heavily armored, and built like a prehistoric war machine. And when you realize humans once stood face to face with this living tank, armed with nothing more than stone weapons and courage, it reminds you just how wild our ancient world truly was. Before we wrap this up, let's crank the weirdness dial one more time and speed run through a few more creatures so strange they feel like science fiction, except they were absolutely real. First up is Shanglong, the tiny dragon lizard that could glide. Yes, glide. This six-inch long reptile from the Cretaceous period had elongated ribs that stretched out like wings, forming a skin-covered membrane similar to a modern flying squirrel. Only this was 92 million years ago. One sentence curiosity hook? It was a real-life dragon with built-in glider wings before birds ever dreamed of flying. Fossils found in China show its preserved soft tissue with wing-like structures fully intact, and paleontologists believe it used them to leap and soar between trees, avoiding predators or chasing insect prey in prehistoric forests. It was nature's first experiment in powered flight. Small, silent, and spectacularly strange. Next, meet Ozodax, also known as the zombie boneworm. These bizarre creatures didn't roam the land or swim through oceans. They feasted exclusively on bones. One sentence hook? This creature's entire purpose was to dissolve and devour the skeletons of the dead. Found in deep sea fossil beds dating back 100 million years, these worms would latch onto whale carcasses and release acid to bore directly into the bone, extracting fat and nutrients. But it gets weirder. The males were microscopic and lived their entire lives inside the females, like an army of disposable sperm cells packed into the body of a bone-eating queen. Imagine discovering a creature that thrives only when something else is dead, lives in complete darkness, and evolved to be a natural recycler of the deep. That's Ozodax, grotesque, alien, and a reminder that even decay has its monsters. And finally, say hello to Dino Kyrus, a creature that baffled scientists for decades. When its fossil was first discovered in Mongolia, all paleontologists had were its arms. Gigantic, eight-foot-long, clawed arms that looked like they belonged to a predator the size of a bus. For years, it was a mystery. One sentence hook. The dinosaur with Freddy Krueger arms turned out to be a duck-billed, pot-bellied omnivore. When more complete fossils were found, scientists were shocked. Instead of a sleek predator, Dinochirus was an awkward, hump-backed, duck-faced, herbivore-leaning giant with wide feet and a sail-like spine. It had massive claws, but they were likely used for digging or grabbing plants, not tearing flesh. It was a Frankenstein mashup of traits, part ornithomitid, part sloth, part mutant duck, and it didn't make sense, until it did. These bonus creatures prove something critical. When it comes to evolution, there are no rules. Nature didn't just create monsters. It experimented with every shape, size, and survival strategy imaginable. Some soared, some burrowed into bones. Some looked terrifying, but turned out to be gentle giants with terrible posture. But all of them show us one thing. Extinction doesn't erase the weird. It just buries it, waiting to be discovered.